Jerry Murphy, it's about to start. Within 10 minutes, the battle of this car will have started. How do you feel about it now? Uh, reasonably happy, reasonably comfortable. Things seem to be getting into place. Crowd is gathering. Uh, the scene lot are preparing. Uh, we can see there in the background, they're defending the castle. Uh, the horses uh, have been uh, going through their paces during the morning, so everything is in readiness. Where did the idea come from in the first place? Well, I suppose going back to the time when we were going to school, we have been taught history of the Battle of Lascales, 1642. It was drilled into us by our teachers. Um, I suppose when you get older, you get a bit nostalgic and you think of history and read more history. And then people began talking about the Battle of Lascales, how did it happen, how did it come about, and I suppose then we researched how we could reenact it. And um, that was a long process, and we eventually got uh, in, con in contact with the Seal Knot Society in England, who do 17th century battles, reenact them. And it all came from there, and uh, there have been uh, towing and throwing, uh, talking with the Seal Knot. And as a result of a lot of discussion, debate, overcoming, problems and we're there now and we're here and this is the first reenactment of the Battle of Scala since 1642. Well, I'm talking to you now in the wake of the Olympics <laughs> and there have been rows between the various committees, yes. Irish committees. I this battle was a row between Irish committees in many ways so nothing changes much. Oh no, no, history always repeats itself, don't it? <laughs> Would you hope there might be a change in the result here today? I don't think so. I think that that is the one feature of the seal knot. They reenact to according to the way history is written. They don't change history. Whatever happened, uh, they do things according to the letter of their law, which is authentic. It the seems, authentic. looking around us here, a great country day. Men, women, children, a Beautiful. family day. Family day out, yes. That's what we hope to. There's plenty of opposition, but today is a family day out and uh, the families are gathering here and we hope to be able to facilitate them we hope we give them a good, uh, a good day's entertainment. And of course the first time it happened in 1642 it happened once, it's happening twice in the skull this weekend. Yes, yes, uh, we felt that it would be a shame to waste the seal knot uh, on one day that they try and get whatever, um, to get their talents on, on the second day as well because of the uh, side shows that have been on the entertainment, uh, Limerick are playing in Dublin and their entertainments in Mill Street and in uh, Mitchellstown, but we will be here again tomorrow to let one of day. A great weekend for the skull. I hope so. I hope so. It has been great up to now. Friday night was a cracking night in that we had fireworks. Saturday night we had a magnificent parade of the seal night. Uh, today is good. So it's great for the scale, Dunica. It's the first of its kind in Ireland. Um, this is the first time for the seal not to come into this country. It was a major operation for ourselves in that uh, we had to, uh, our part of our contract was to provide the ferry transport, the cost, who, and um, we have to feed the 300 for the week. So as you can imagine, that's quite a, a large undertaking. Um, the membership is varied. It goes from quite old people who maybe have retired and are looking for an interest down to students, people with young children. Quite often you see people join the society, meet someone, marry, and uh, ten years later you're talking to their ten-year-old kid in the, in the beer tent or around the trader's row. Speaking of beer, do uh, you get to partake of the grog much? Um, that is quite a large uh, portion of the activities of the society. When we first joined, it was more a, a booze and bash event. We, we attracted a lot of rugby teams, uh, that sort of thing. But now there seems to be a lot more emphasis on the historical side. But it's actually a very good sort of stress therapy, actually, yes. <laughs> Works very well. Uh, this gentleman here, uh, you look uh, particularly mean and moody, if I might say. Uh, you don't have any uh, ancestors that were involved in this kind of thing, do you? Uh, not that I know of. Most of my ancestors, when we started tracing it back, seem to be fairly dodgy characters, so we sort of gave up on that one. Tell me, why do you do this? Um, there's lots of reasons, really, but I think the the thing that I find nice about it is it's it's a huge bunch of friends. Battle 
uh, took place here on the 3rd of September 1642. There were thousands of men involved in uh, the battle and uh, Inchiquin was ultimately successful in it. Great slaughter in the place. Uh, of course, the war of which it was part continued on until 1653, but the whole thing ended with the um, Cromwellian conquest of Ireland. Steve Chater of the Sealed Knot. It is, yes. What exactly is the Sealed Knot? Uh, the Sealed Knot was a society formed in 1968. Uh, basically, our aim is to tell people about how life would have been in the 17th century uh, in those 30 years. Um, we've grown into a society of something like 7,000 members. Um, we perform and put on uh, shows and raise money for loads of different charities uh, over, well, the majority of the UK. And every now and then we get a, a visit to foreign parts and this is our visit first ever visit to Ireland. Now, to go back to the number of engagements your group has enacted or reenacted, the Battle of Naseby was one of the big ones, was it? Yes, uh, last year, in fact, was the 350th anniversary of the Battle of Naseby, and we reenacted that engagement, and we had something like 6,500 combatants on the field. Um, so it was a very spectacular event, yes. How does one control an event like that? Do you have an overall director? Uh, we, we have, in the society, uh, we're structured. We have uh, different people running different parts of the society. So we have a muster master general who will uh, find a location, decide on what we're doing. Um, we then also, within the society, we have PR functions, we have uh, individual commanders of each branch of the armies, whether it be parliament or uh, for the king. Within those, we then have individual regiments who've got their own commanding officers. So we have a structured format within the society. Now, how did you reinvest yourself for Ireland? It's quite different here now. In terms of? In terms of the combatants. Oh, right, yes, that's caused us quite a bit of a problem because we're effectively fighting Irish against Irish. Um, and what we've had to do is we've got people from something like 25 different regiments in the UK and we'll find today that people are actually engaged against people who they're normally fighting hand to hand with or side by side with. So we're a bit confused this morning, so we'll see how it goes this afternoon. You have Irish horses taking part? We right? have, yes, and I talked to uh, a, few, a few of the cavalry this morning who are um, looking forward to today, should I say. <laughs> The Duhalla horses, we're not sure whether they are looking forward or we not. We don't know, because we'll find out when the first shots of cannon or musket go. Do you have Irish combatants? Uh, we have a group of uh, local Jacobites who've descended on the camp over the weekend, so they've been invited to fight for the English, I believe. And you and I will be doing this commentary. It's certainly new for me. It's new for you, it's too. It's new for me. I got off the boat on Thursday morning, and I was told by the Muster Master General, Steve, you're all right for doing the commentary? I said, sorry, and here I am, so. Looking forward to it? Uh, yes. And of course, made the best team win, so to speak. As I don't know who is on which side, I think we'll find out, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> we might make it up as we go along.